Hi everyone. So this is going to be a quick tutorial on why we use Tinkercad. Um, right on my screen I have Tinkercad open and I have a couple little characters or a character and a house on here and this is just going to be a quick little shot of how we would put those together. So we use Project Ignite as teachers in our classroom, we learn the fundamentals, and then we can create stuff using the deep design freestyle or jumping right into Tinkercad. So let's start with our little house. I'm gonna move my little dude out of the way. And you can see I'm moving him right on my work plane. The blue grid is my work plane. The dark lines are centimeter lines. The lighter thin lines are millimeter lines. So that helps us with our measurements. We have our camera view controls here and we can rotate left and right on here. We can rotate downward and upward as well. We can go to isometric on our selected object. We can home and we can zoom in and out. That's a simple area of controlling our view. We can also use our mouse and left click and rotate. That's a free orbit tool. We can look from underneath, we can look around, and if we left click and shift, we can move our entire work plane left, right, forwards and backwards, okay? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use some of our tools to create a small little house. I'm going to start over here in our objects and pull down menus. We've got many objects here. I'm going to go to my geometric and that's where I'm going to find my basic shapes. Okay, If you need something beyond your basic shapes, if you need a, um, a more improvised shape, you can go under Shape Generators, Tinkercad, and you have a polygon feature and an extrusion tool. I'm not gonna deal with those too much, but I wanna point out that they're here and they do lots of really neat things. They're worth exploring and checking out on your own. So in order to make my house, I'm gonna take a box, I'm gonna drag it onto my work plane, that's my blue grid, and using the different grips, I'm gonna resize it because a block is just 20 by 20. It's not quite big enough for me. Um, so I want to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to pull the front edge forward to make that 25. I'm going to take my right edge and pull that to the right. And I'm going to make that 45. Just so you can see how the dimensions change as I drag. So I'm literally left clicking and dragging to move the size of that box. I also do have a ruler tool. If I wanted to type in those numbers, I can click R on my keyboard and then select my lower left hand grip of my object and I get all of my dimensions. I can click on a number and I can type in and hit enter and it automatically adjusts the size. When I want to get rid of my ruler, I can dismiss the ruler. So now the base of my house is the same as what I had and I want to go ahead and I want to put a roof on the top of my house. Now most people come over here and look at our geometrics and say, oh we've got a roof, let me drag that up. But what that does is it puts it at the same level as my house. I like it on the top. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to delete that one just by highlighting it and hitting delete on my keyboard. And I'm going to use my work plane tool so I can select my helpers on my menu and select work plane or I can click W on my keyboard Either way, it gets me to the same place, and I get this little um, light blue box that moves to whatever surface I'm touching. So I'm going to put that right on the top, select that, and then bring my roof over. Now I know that my roof is touching the top of my house, and I can put that work plane right back down to the bottom where it was. I'm going to take my roof. Now I need to rotate it. I need the pitch of the roof to be going in a 90 degree angle, so when I Hover over those arrows, I get my um, rotation tools. Now, if I keep close to my object, I'm going to rotate at 22 and a half degrees. If I come far away, it's going to be at one degree. And if I hit, hold the shift key down, it's going to be at 45 degrees. Okay, I'm going to select that lower grip, and now I'm going to pull that over the whole size of my house using my left click. I'm going to orbit and take a look at what's going on and I can see that I'm a little bit far over on one side, not quite over enough on the other. 
So I can do one of two things. I can select it and pull in one side and push out the other, or I can select both objects. So just selecting one, holding the shift key, selecting the other. Okay, I can tell they're both selected when they both have the blue highlight around them. And then I'm gonna go up to adjust and align. And align just allows me to line things up. So now it's lined up in the center. And if I look at it from the front, it's lined up through the center and the front. You can use different grids to line in different ways. Okay, I do like to align in the center. Okay, Once I click off, my align tool goes away and now my house is starting to look like a house. It needs some windows. So I'm going to use that work plane again. It's always going to be handy to use and click the front of my house. Now I need some windows. My windows are going to come from the holes. My holes. I have box holes and cylinder holes and I can actually make any shape a hole. Um, and I'll show you that in a second, but I'm going to take a box hole, bring it onto my work plane, which is now the orange. That's my temporary work plane. Holding the shift key, I'm going to grab one of my side grips and I'm going to rescale that down to the size that I want my window. Now I'm going to rotate that. I'd like this window to go all the way through my house like it is up on the other one. So I'm going to stretch it more than 25 millimeters and then use my cone, that's my z-axis cone, to push it through my house. Once it's through, I'm going to then select my window and just like in any other program, um, control C, control V, copies and pastes, and now I have another window. I can take them and I can use my arrows on my keyboard to nudge them left and right to where I want them to be. Using my work plane, I'm going to put that back to the original place. When I rotate, sorry about that, when I rotate I can see I have my windows in the back. Now if I want to add a door, maybe I want to put a door on the end. I'm going to go ahead, click my geometric, grab my my box. I'm going to rescale it using shift to shrink it in all dimensions. Maybe I don't want it all dimensions though. Once I get it close, I'm going to go ahead, push that in a little bit more, and maybe I zoom in a little bit using my zoom where I can get my single dimensions. There we go. Put my work plane back by clicking W on the on my keyboard. And now I have a door. That door didn't look quite big enough, so we're going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Now the door I'm setting on the surface, I'm not going to make that a hole, but maybe I want a window in my door. So I'm going to go ahead, use my box hole, line it up, and then resize it. Now right now I'm sitting on that surface, so I need to push that inward, and that negative is telling me how far in my house I'm pushing it. So I just pushed it two millimeters in, and since the thickness of my door is two millimeters, as we can see right here, that means that that window is going to be right in the door and not actually into the house. And for me, that's perfect. Now if I want to group this, take a look at how everything is built, I'm going to select all of it, and I can select by doing the um, click and drag. It's just clicking in the upper left-hand side or upper right-hand side, dragging to the lower left-hand side, lower opposite side, and then click group. And what that does, it now makes all of these objects a single object. Now when I look in, I can see through my windows, I can see my door, and I have a little house. When I click on it, it selects all together. Okay? So that is my house. The next one that I have is I had this little person. Now he's fantastic, and he's where we see lots of kids go. Now that's just a couple of shapes. When we break it down and we look at him, he's a sphere, he's a couple of cylinders, he is a couple of half spheres, and that is it. So we're just going to move our houses out of the way. We're going to grab our little 
our little mascot dude here, and we're gonna build him. Very simply, going to our geometrics, I'm gonna start with a sphere. Now I'm gonna leave the sphere the exact size that it is, which is a 20 by 20, and I can check that by clicking R on my keyboard for my ruler, selecting my grip, 20 by 20 by 20. So it's a 20 millimeter diameter sphere. He needs some feet. So I'm gonna give him half spheres for feet. I'm gonna take and click Shift and reduce the size of my feet. But I don't want them to be spheres, I really want them to be ovals. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here. Take my right side and move it in a little bit. You couldn't quite see that dimension, so let's show you that again, there you go. So six millimeters. Now I want the feet to be the same size, so Control C and Control V. Use my arrows to nudge it over a little bit. Now I can take the two of them and I can set them right under the sphere. Now I need to give him some eyes he needs to see. So I can change my work plane to right about where I want his nose to be. Okay, I know I just said eyes, but we're gonna put it there. I'm gonna make a sphere. Now I wanna make the sphere about six by six. So holding the shift key, you can see that my dimensions are changing together. They're all going at the same proportional amount. And I'm gonna come down and put one eye just to the right of his nose. And I'm gonna rotate around and use that Z axis cone and push it down into the sphere. Four to five millimeters is usually just right. Now I'm gonna control C and control V. Up, oh, whoops, forgot to grab the correct item. I want his eyeball. Control C, control V. Again, I'm gonna rotate so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take that eye, I'm gonna move it to the other side. Maybe I wanna get his eyes a little bit closer together. We tend to like their eyes being almost touching. Okay, so now we have two eyes. I'm gonna put the work plane back down. And what I'm looking for here is when I click on the eye, it's hard to see. Let's change his color here using our inspector. I'm gonna change his body color too. Okay, when I click on his eye, see how? Nope, you can't see it. Let's change this one as well. Okay, when I click on his eye, you have a blue highlight. That means that that's a hard edge. When you don't have the highlight below it, it means that the eye is solidly connected to the other sphere. If it was blue highlighted below, it would mean that there was a problem. So if I were to take this one, see how as I move it out, you get the little highlight. When I look at it from this side, it might not, well, I guess it looks a little bit funny, but you can't really tell so much. When I start to rotate it, I can see that his eyes are really popping out of his head. So we wanna make sure that those eyeballs stay nice and solid. Anytime you're working with two objects and you're putting them together, you look for that highlight to make sure that your objects are touching. If they're not touching, then they're not gonna print properly. Okay, so now that we have this little dude with some eyes, we need to give him a hat. I'm gonna give him a hat right on the top of his head. So I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit to the back side, and that hat is going to be a cylinder right above his head, and I'm gonna rotate so that I can see that top grip, bring it down a little bit. Actually, this one is the brim, so I'm gonna bring that down to about two millimeters. That's this right here. And then as I rotate it, I can see that it's really sitting up on his head. I want it to be back a little bit and solidly attached. So it's okay that his head is sticking through just a little bit. We're gonna fix that up in just a minute. I'm gonna select his sphere head and the, uh, the brim. And again, we're gonna line things up using the align tool. Okay, one, two, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna change my work plane again to the top of the brim, bring out yet another cylinder, and then using the shift key so that I change all the dimensions at the same time, select both the brim and the hat, align according to my brim, 
Here we go. And then I can dismiss my align tool and change the height of my hat. Okay. Putting my work plane back down by clicking W. He's coming along. I think all I need is a bow tie. So I would take my pyramid using my rotate. I'm going to hold down shift because I want it to rotate a full 90 degrees. Sphere right in the center. And then again, I'm going to take and copy and paste. And then I can actually use this mirror tool that allows me to mirror the object exactly to the opposite side. Dismiss my mirror and I just need to nudge it a little bit to get it in the right spacing. Select all three. I'm going to group them together, resize them together, and place a bow tie just above his toes. I'm going to use my nudge. I think his bow tie is maybe a little bit big. Okay. Now it's up to you. Do you want to decorate him and give him a mouth? Do you want to give him some arms? Do you want to make him into a, a girl and give her a flower off her hat and a smile? Those are things that you can do to create your animated character. Okay. So these are things that you can do with Tinkercad. It's way fun. All you have to do is imagine it. And once you imagine it, you can create it. Um, here's one more. A cylinder. I'm going to do a second cylinder, but I'm going to make that a hole. I'm going to lift this up just a little bit. And I'm going to make this one just a little bit bigger. Okay. Select them both, adjust, align, putting them together. Oops. That's not quite aligned. Let's try that again. One more time. I'm getting in my own way here. There we go. There we go. Now I can make my work plane, sphere, resize, using my Z, control C, control V. I'm going to take that to the other side. Okay, and I'm going to go up to that tool that I said would be helpful Tinkercad extrusion. Wait for the tool to come up. It's a fantastic one. There we go. I'm going to reshape and retool. I'm going to push it in and lift it up. And maybe I don't need it quite so big. So I'm going to bring it in a little bit. But how cool is this? You can make the mouth, you could make a mustache, you could make pretty much anything you can think of. And now you have a little cup of personality. There you go. I hope you enjoyed some of the objects. And you just group them. When you group them, it makes them all connect together. You can see the base of the cup. Okay. So now these are some ideas that you can take and you can create on your own. Have fun.